Deadpool and Gamora travel back in time to make Netflix a lot of money. It's the year 2050 and a familiar looking pilot, no, not you, is being hunted down for stealing a jet. He's about to travel through time, but not so fast. He's got company. You know I can track you, right? Your tracking system is about to crash. Got him. He figures it's unfair to be the only one shot at, so he blasts a shot off himself. However, it's a wormhole. Time travel on the very first scene. Nice. No time wasted, huh? <laughs> He channels his inner Star Fox and Barrel rolls his jet out of harm's way and into the hole. Hmm. Adam? I'm gonna kill you! We cut to some kid, Adam Reed, having a chase scene of his own. Hi. No. Rude. Bye. Unlike our pilot, Adam gets caught. <coughs> you got any more jokes? Uh, yeah, actually. Did you order a bully starter kit or something? <coughs> oh, what a coincidence. It's 2022. Later, his mom, Ellie, finds him with a bloody nose. Despite being the one who got his shit smacked up, Adam is the one suspended. Sadly, Ellie's anger falls on deaf ears. This kid just can't catch a break. He lost his father just last year. On the ride home, Ellie berates her child. I know what got you punched. I know that mouth of yours. Can I get to know yours? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Adam simply stood up for himself. He's twice your size. Everyone is twice my size. I've seen babies bigger than me. I don't understand you. Dad would. Whatever, you should start caring about your future. The future is coming, sooner than you think. Foreshadowing moment. With that premonition, we're brought to their house. A single player mode of catch. That's not a good sign. Neither is this. Are you going on a date? Your dress says you're going on a date. Look, mommy has needs. Turn around. Wait, what? Oh, oh, okay. As she departs, she reminds him not to play video games. Uh-oh, let's hope there's autosave. The good doggo, Honking, investigates. Adam never watched horror movies, so he goes after his dog. The bat will definitely help. He's got to know that an asthmatic kid shouldn't be going near burning trees. On second thought, let's get out of here. Hmm, what's that? The pair investigate and find, you guessed it, Ryan Reynolds. Ah! Relax, he's not here to hurt anyone. He's too busy bleeding. How old are you? Twelve. That's a weird question to ask a child. Don't, don't call anyone. Don't call Chris Hansen. I'm not a predator, I swear. That's a lot of blood. Well, I have so much more in my body. Ryan Reynolds playing Ryan Reynolds. Classic. Time traveler guy makes his way to the house to regenerate. <laughs> nice try. He ransacks the fridge and finally starts tending to his wound. While Adam checks on the home intruder's bag. Is this a lightsaber? No, don't touch my stuff. Stop that. Enough with the bat. Adam is annoying. If I wanted to hurt you, I would have. You have a very punchable face. He should really focus on his bullet wound. <laughs> Gross. Who even are you? Of course, that's classified. The child's continued pestering finally leads to an outburst. Oh, Jesus Christ, Adam. Wait, how'd you know his name? Well, he knows a lot more. Adam's birthday, parents, his father's death, his asthma, even his school suspension. <laughs> Yep, he's future Adam. Where are you going? The two Adams head to the forest where he's keeping his jet. We learn that Big Adam was supposed to end up in 2018 for a rescue mission. For who? Well, it's classified. Maybe he was trying to stop someone from eating a bat. Anyway, bad news is he can't get back into his time jet because he's injured. You see, it can detect that and won't let him in unless he's fit to fly. And so, that's where small Adam comes in. The pair make it inside and run diagnostics. Fortunately, it's a smoother process than Windows. The jet has a self-repair function, so all Big Adam has to do is heal up and hope that the jet is fully functional by then. Do you remember this? Us talking? Or is this a different part of the multiverse? I am multiverse! My god, we watched too many movies. Marvel movie moment? Later, Big Adam rests up in their father's garage as small Adam waits for their mother. Hmm, now we know why he went back in time. Ellie arrives home and her date, Derek, drops by for her s fuck. Drops by for her scarf. You have a wonderful mouth, Mullen. He may be young, but he already has Ryan Reynolds' brand of humor. You can be a real jerk sometimes. Meanwhile, Big Adam looks in, wondering how his small self contains so much evil. The next day, Ellie does some accounting while Adam mocks her for her boomer ways. Ever heard of a computer mom? God, I hate this kid. I gotta go. Call me if you need me. I won't. This kid needs to chill. We catch a glimpse of Adam's dad, Lewis. Regenerating isn't as easy without Hulk powers. Later, small Adam checks himself out. It's not weird. He's just curious if it's his workout routine or meds that got his future self so ripped. So, do we ever get any girls? I was just wondering. Well, wonder in silence. Old Adam needs to go to the pharmacy to heal faster. A flight suit isn't the most appropriate fit, so they dig into their father's closet. It's been a year and a half, but it appears Ellie is still in mourning, as she hasn't cleaned it out. Maybe you should stop giving her crap and show some genuine empathy. I'm you, you know. True, but he still regrets the way he treated their mom. On the way, Old Adam needs help with cash. In the future, we use crypto. The big one shops while small boy gets bullied. Again, future Adam to the rescue? God, no. That would be irresponsible. You see, this fight needs to happen. For character development, or whatever. Go get him, champ. 
Run away! As he runs off, Big Adam finally decides to step in and scares the piss out of the little lads. Are you peeing right now? Yes. Gotta appreciate the honesty. Future Adam returns home, only to find a disgruntled kid rummaging through his stuff. Look, you don't become me unless you get beat up all the time. I'm sorry. Who this? It's his wife, Laura. But we do not have a wife anymore. The pain is too much, so Adam needs a drink to cope. Who else needs to cope? Ellie, who's a regular here. She's chummy enough with the bartender to warn him about teenage kids. Sorry, it's been a rough day here. Young Adam hasn't been dealing with his grief well. Might be something she's doing wrong. No, you're not doing anything wrong. Teenage boys are just horrible. However, boys always come back for their mamas. Suddenly, she notices Adam's familiar looking jacket, but he's long gone before she can question him about it. Meanwhile, the bad guys have finally arrived at the correct time. The boss lady is Maya Sorin, and her trusty bodyguard is Christos. This is a special kind of time jet. It comes with a faceless army. Back to the two Adams enjoying their breakfast together. Cute. We learn more about Laura. Adam met her at the academy, and she's been missing for two years after time jump gone wrong. He believes Maya is behind it. Apparently, Maya is their father's partner. She's pretty nice to the young Adam, but the older one assures him that Maya is no friend. She got rich after their father's death taking advantage of all his work. Now, she has control over the most valuable resource on Earth, chocolate milk. I mean, time. Lewis accidentally invented time travel with his so-called Adam Project. Or as I like to call it, his favorite child. Suddenly, Adam's spider senses begin to tingle. Great, they're here. They have invisible armor, but why do they reveal themselves when attacking? Anyway, Big Adam goes to town before going full Darth Maul mode. That's a lightsaber, dude. He sends the baddies flying before a plane appears. Oh. There's his old pal from the academy, Christos. It's a happy reunion. Okay, not really. He gets pounded out before. Wait a minute. Gamora? Without the green makeup? Seeing his badass wife kick ass quite literally springs Adam into action. They're in the middle of a fight, but a slow motion hug is still in order. Never mind. Couple murder is better. Let's hope the young one isn't traumatized by the family-friendly death explosions. Dying outside your fixed time is messy! Laura successfully saves her husband. It also helps that Adam is a part-time Jedi ninja. Young Adam is certainly entertained, but they still need to run away. A chase ensues, although it's a bit unfair with Maya flying overhead. Laura is officially introduced to young Adam. Parallel contact me! Well, you always said you wanted to meet me earlier, so yeah. Amidst the chaos, they go off-road weaving through the forest. Hoverboard riding soldiers accept the challenge and pop out. Adam's used to chase scenes by now, so stop! <laughs> One more to go. That certainly cut it. <laughs> Great driving, Laura. This guy might be hiring. At last, the trio are safe. For now. A little later, we see that Laura has done well for herself. She's got her own lake and everything. Laura gives us some much needed exposition on why she jumped back to 2018. She saw an entry of a jet going to 2018, but no record of a jet jumping back. How'd that happen? Someone must have altered the time stream. So the future the jet had left from had already been changed. Looks like Big Adam traded brains for muscles. I freaking hate myself. Inside, Laura continues her story. It was Maya's jet that went back to 2018. Lewis's magnetic particle accelerator, the Atom Project, officially went online. Maya must have gone back to give her younger self future info to gain massive wealth and power. And total control time travel. That must be how Elon Musk does it. The world has already been changed by Maya, and their 2050 is apparently far worse than John Connor's. You know, Terminator. Anyway, Laura got her jet blown up, ending up stuck alone for four years. But it's fine now. <laughs> Better leave, young one. Wait, you have a bullet wound, right? Suck it up. Okay, mommy. With one last hurrah finished, the couple face reality. Time travel needs to be stopped. Unfortunately, Laura can't go with them to 2018. Adam's jet only allows his DNA because bad writing. If I go to stop time travel, we never meet. We never happen. But we did. Somewhere in us will be the echo of this time. And we will find each other. Okay, sure, whatever. Anyway, the bad guys are coming. Laura has her defenses up and assures Adam she'll be fine. The goal is to stop Maya. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no time for round two. God damn it! Understandable. Laura indeed had enough prep time. Look at those guns. But that's not the only thing she's packing. But wait, everyone's still alive. Oh, I spoke too soon. In the forest, young Adam isn't too happy about changing the future. You've had your fun, now I want to experience that too. Old Adam spoils his future, explaining how he got mentally and socially screwed after their father's death. Losing his scholarship in college, ending up in the Air Force, and finally time travel happens and he loses the only woman he's ever loved. Okay, fine. So how do you plan on stopping time travel? Good question. Their father may have the answer. We're gonna find dad. Meanwhile, Laura is hard pressed by Christos and his men. To make matters worse, Maya pulls up and she's had enough of this foolishness. Looks like the Adams are on their way. So Maya wraps things up as Laura accepts her fate. 
Right after, Mai's overpowered jet easily catches up to the runaways. Christos is having fun, but the young one isn't. Hang on! Not the face, obviously. Time for evasive maneuvers. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, you literally did the same thing in Green Lantern. It's stupid enough that it works. Although Maya warns them that with the reactor damaged, they only have one jump left. If he travels back in time, there's no returning to 2050. Are you sure you want to do this, little buddy? Punch daddy. Christos tracks them down and catches up for suspense, damaging the jet further, but we have a movie to finish, so... At last, we arrive in 2018. Lewis is alive and well. He gives an engaging physics lecture. As the two Adams spy on him, old Adam has to remind his younger self not to spoil the plot. I won't tell him. Say it. Won't tell him. Back to the lecture, where we're reminded this movie happened. Suddenly, Big Adam erupts, mentioning a counter to one of Lewis's points. Do I know you? Great, some alone time. Adam? No use in hiding now. Is this time travel? The two eventually recount the previous events before Lewis notes. Is that my jacket? You look like a condom with buttons. Ha, <laughs> good one. But back to the time travel thing, which confuses their father. This is wrong, you can't be here. You need to be in your own timeline. Lewis doesn't care why they're here. He wants to preserve the sanctity of time travel, but no one's got time for that. Everyone needs to chill. That was a weird punch, but now they're even. None of it matters anyway. All of the protocols and safeguards Lewis mentions, none of it matters. Maya screwed everything and altered the timeline already. It's difficult for Lewis to believe that the woman funding his project is responsible for their problems. The Adam Project was simply a theory. Wait a second. I'm the godfather of time, time travel. travel. Our new trio ends up in a motel. Lewis apologizes for the trouble his ego caused them. Mankind has no business tampering with the mechanics of the universe. There are forces greater than science. Well, that's why they're here, to stop time travel from happening. However, Lewis blabbers on about the consequences and all the boring science stuff. Stop being a scientist. Be a father. It's too late for me. But he needs you. And what do you need? An emotional walkout scene, that's what. Lewis apologizes to the young Adam. Stopping time travel is just far too dangerous. He needs to leave, go home to Ellie, and well, Adam. Confusing. We're then brought to Maya's building, which she named after herself. Very original. Maya seems uncomfortably close to Lewis and his family. Then, old Maya visits her younger self. She's been here before, two months ago. Though, future Maya can't remember. It's been 32 years for her. Young Maya reprimands herself for potentially changing the time stream. All the future intel she gave herself was unethical and illegal. Regardless, she did everything she was told. In her mind, it's their legacy, and there's no way she's letting the government take it away from them. Because somewhere inside that cheap suit is me. And so, she's back to protect a future where they're not forgotten. We're gonna kill a kid. Cheers. Back to the Adams, Big Adam is sulking, but here's a kid to cheer him up. That sounds wrong. Anyway, the young one corrects some of his memories. You hate dad because he died. Because it was easier than missing him. Things happen to us and we suck at dealing with it. I think it's easier to be angry than it is to be sad. Then, old one became sad and angry. How'd you get to be so smart? How'd you get to be so dumb? Nice try. Well, well, that's one relationship sort of fixed. Cutting to their 2018 home, Hawking is even cuter and Ellie is miserable. Lewis's future visitors must have affected him quite a bit. Staying home, cooking for his wife, and showing additional concern for Adam. You think Adam is sad? Am I a good dad? He doesn't need perfect, he just needs you. There's still plenty of time, right? Plainer than you think. We're back at Maya's and the two atoms are ready to infiltrate. Big Adam's plan is simple, blow up the electromagnetic accelerator. When a bad idea is the only idea, it becomes a great idea, which is a perfect way to learn that he'll get arrested nine years from now. It might be a terrible idea, but here's a great way to make up for that. Let the kid use the drone. Do you read me, Roger, Star Fox? This is Butternut Sippy Cup 10-4. Suddenly, the evil bad guys appear. Young Adam gets his revenge for the incident with his bullies, taking his sweet time until... Adam! And they say VR sucks. Old Adam can finally pop them one by one. Don't worry about the cars. The young ones got them. Well, no. But this guy does. Too close for comfort? That was invigorating! That's your mom's car! In the end, Lewis decided to help his kid, or rather, kids. But first, let's make sure what the goal is. I'm gonna destroy your accelerator, and I'm gonna enjoy it. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, destroying it isn't going to change much, but there's a secret algorithm that makes the whole thing work. Sounds like YouTube. And that can't be replicated, I guess. As they head down the elevator, Adam notes that it's his first time here. It only took you 44 years to bring me here. Fair. Meanwhile, small Adam has been playing too much. At the basement, Lewis still has access to everything, and it is glorious. How he still has time to teach a class, I don't even know. There are two possibilities if they pull the hard drive out. 
First is that the accelerator will be dormant and no one can program it again. Second is that it will destroy all living things within 100 miles. Let's hope it's the first thing. All it takes is a simple twist and pull and the hard drive is right there. Screw it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the two Mayas are here and they are surrounded. She chastises her partner for trying to bring down their project, which she spent millions on. Hundreds of millions of my money. And that apparently means she can do everything that she pleases. The drive, please. No. Just no. Well, young Adam is here to convince you, but not really. I gotta think it over, okay? It becomes a shouting match until little Adam makes a move. That can't be good. Electromagnetic seal compromised. That seemingly means that it'll start attracting all metals. That takes care of the faceless army. Uh oh. Wait, so the drive isn't magnetic? Christos has to take it away from Adam. Lightsaber duel time. Dual wielding versus dual blades. Who will win? Oh great, they disarmed each other. Back to classic fisticuffs. Little Adam, on the other hand, demonstrates his brain power once more and he gets away and coincidentally gets the lightsaber. Old Adam isn't doing so well, so the young one literally has to swoop in to save the day. Superhero landing. Deadpool moment? Anyway, he gets smacked. But it's enough of a distraction for Big Adam to get a few punches in before exploring his kinky side by getting choked. Wait, plot armor time. I can't shut it down. Stop! I want my try! Young Mai hasn't leveled up to cold-blooded killer yet, so the old one takes charge. You think I'm playing? I had to kill his wife twice to protect my program. Give me the drive. Whoops, the bullet is magnetic, and she doesn't have enough plot armor to protect herself. You never understood the science. Got that right. Sometimes it pays to be a nerd. Now, it's time to run. All that destruction easily contained, and the trio make it out alive. I'd say bring your kid to work day was a huge success. They all walk home. It might take a while for time to correct itself so they can spend the remaining time together. Ellie is out with the younger Adam, so it's all good. They try to tell Lewis about his demise, but he's got it all figured out. He doesn't need to hear the details though. No one has a right to change a future. You're both my future. I'm lucky enough to see it. He goes on about lovey-dovey stuff and it breaks old Adam's cold demeanor. Adam, you're my boy and I love you. It's all very emotional as their relationships are finally mended. Before their time is up, they spend their last few minutes playing catch. Old Adam reminds his younger self to give their mom a bone-crushing hug on his behalf. Play ball! They're no longer by themselves but with each other. Though it doesn't last long as time has finally corrected itself. Great transition. Ellie is still stuck with their poor filing system, but remember what you talked about, Adam? They'll be fine, I guess. Reenacting a mugging is kinda weird though. Oh look, future Adam's also back. It's a physics lecture, and look who's here. It's Laura, running late. Must be the academy where they met. Adam puts on his Ryan Reynolds charm, and it's super effective. She's in a wrong class though. This is a flight lecture, and Laura's in computational linguistics. And I'm lost. Not anymore. I found you. Did time really correct itself if they perfectly recreated their first meeting? Whatever, I'll dig a happy ending. 